Hello everyone, welcome back. So we're about to uh, move some sheep back out to pasture here. And uh, we've got them all sheared up this past last week. This particular group right here needed their hooves trimmed. So that's all being done already. That's why they're all marked. As I trimmed them, I marked them. And so they're all going to go outside along with this group here. So we gotta make, get them ready for that. Now a bit of the danger of bringing uh, sheep that have been inside on dry hay for a period of time and then bringing them out to pasture. Um, the issue with that is you're doing a pretty dramatic diet change. So we're gonna have to do uh, some careful manipulation here, if you will, with these sheep. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed them dry hay, stuff that they're really gonna wanna eat. Hopefully that'll fill up their uh, gut stomachs enough so that when we get out get them out to pasture yeah they will for sure want to eat some of it but that won't be the only thing that's in their gut so hopefully that'll help with uh, any possible bloat issues and uh, so that's one of the things we're going to do first then we got to set up some fencing just to uh, help corral them in the right direction we're going to chase them along this pathway going along the field over here and all the way down through the gully and uh, you'll see as we go along here but uh, for now we're just going to set up some fences here and kind of go from there so we'll be going from the sheep barn over there all the way down this laneway over here, down this pathway. All the way to here. Sorry if it's windy. And it's kind of no wind noise in there, but uh, gonna bring this roll up here at the same time we've got about 13 acres here of very high quality alfalfa and uh, field looks beautiful butterflies are having a heyday and uh, anyway so we got a little bit set up here as you can see I've got just a very small piece here uh, but the alfalfa and uh, we'll let them kind of forage through this little hedgerow here that's full of weeds basically it's a lot less nutritious um, as opposed to this so as soon as they're finished eating here at least they won't be able to completely gorge themselves on this really rich nutritious hay I mean they'll be uh, able to eat some of these weeds here which hopefully uh, will help mitigate the whole problem of bloat. So that's kind of what we're dealing with with these, bringing them from that dry hay onto this nice lush pasture. So we're just gonna set up one more fence along this uh, pathway here, all the way down the hill towards the quad there. And then uh, we'll be ready to start bringing sheep here. Okay, so we got all the fencing set up that we're gonna need to get them to pasture. So now we're just gonna give them some dry hay and uh, let them eat a bunch of that for a bit. And uh, about half hour, 45 minutes, we'll probably try to move them.
All right, guys, so we're about to move these sheep now that they've had a meal of this dry hay. And uh, I got uh, Nigel and Leanne here to help. So we're going to see how this goes. These are always interesting times when you try to move sheep um, a distance like this. A bit of the problem is some of these uh, ewes are not that accustomed to being on pasture. Up to this point, they've uh, been primarily in the barn. Some of them are first time ewes from last year. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. Yeah, you got him. <laughs> Belongs in here. We don't want that one on pasture because we'll never catch it there, so. They try to climb the hill up there, okay? Is this on? No, nope, nothing's on. Let's go! Hey! That's it, keep going. So far, so good. Well, sometimes they climb up in the middle of that hill. Yeah, sure. Keep going, you're almost there. Hop, hop, let's go. Hey, hey, come on, hey. Go! Hey! Pshh. Hey! Come on up there! There we go. Hey! Perfect. They're in, Nigel. He 
you take that one out and then gather this one with it put it in next to that one You got to pull this one out of the bush a little ways first. So let's put this one here. Pull that one out. Pull it tight. So that one doesn't have a stake on it. So we just got to tie that up. So that went really well. All things considered, they uh, basically ran right in. So again, they weren't used to being out here. They, some of them have never been back here. So this is all new for them. But uh, here they are. Yeah, they always trample a bunch at first and then we'll see how this works. Hopefully they're gonna be okay and not get too, uh, too much lush grass in them. I've actually never had any die from bloat, but I know it is a problem if you're not careful. I've heard from enough people about it. So I hope I took enough measures to prevent any of that. And uh, I guess we'll know tomorrow or maybe we'll know in a few hours, but uh, we should be fine. Wha hey, Blackie. Oh. <laughs> almost ran us over there. They're liking their newfound freedom here. <laughs> Slow down. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, they don't really have a clue, some of these. They've hardly ever been on pasture. I think we had some of those first timers, they, they land this May for the first time. And so they're out here, but, and I think last fall we had them on pasture right next to the barn for a little while. But apart from that, they've never been on pasture. So this is completely new for them. And uh, so it's kind of interesting to see what they're going to do here. That's Blackie leading the pack. See, it would be good if they just ate leaves and all that stuff there and just left the alfalfa alone for a little while. Yeah, they're all trying to go back again. I must admit, I love having them on pasture. As a general rule, it's easier to keep sheep healthy when they're on pasture as opposed to uh, in a barn. If you've got a really well ventilated barn, um, a lot of the up-to-date ones are really good that way, then they're usually fine. But as a general rule, being outside is one of the healthiest places for them. So if we can get them out here still for a couple months this fall, then we're off to a good start. So I just got to go back now and uh, get a solar fencer. Uh, to energize the fence, keeps predators out, keeps the sheep in. So we're just out by the bean field here, so we just thought we'd take a look at some uh, some of the soybeans. So if you've never seen a soybean before, this is what it looks like. They're in these pods here, and they look like that. So you can get up to four, usually in a pod, anywhere from three to four. Maybe the odd one, if you got really high yielding beans, you can get five in a pod. But uh, the majority of them would be three, the odd one four, at least on my field anyway. And they're not exactly edible, but uh, usually that's how a farmer tests if they're dry or not. You just chew on them a little bit. And then you spit them out. But the mosquitoes are eating us alive, so we're gonna get going. So I'm just bringing the fencer up here, back here at the sheep pen. Hey Blackie. 
What do you guys want? Hmm? <laughs> Just following the shepherd, I guess. What do you want from me? Hmm? Following. See these connectors aren't joined here. This is what transmits the power from one fence to the next. So because we got a solar fencer here, we got to make sure it has um, access to the sunlight. So I think I got to put it up here. Well, let's just say they're getting their exercise. So as you can also see, they're not extremely hungry. So the first thing they do is not eat. That's often what they will do when they are hungry. Um, so it's a good sign to see that they're not just really chomping it down super hard and fast right now. That one really is, but. All right, so we got the ground hooked up down there, and we got the power on these uh, contacts here. And we'll just go like that, and we should be live. It's a little green light on there that flickers. The nice thing about this pasture as well is we do have water plumbed in to uh, go all the way back here and uh, it's not exactly all hooked up properly um, but we're going to leave these for the night they're going to be totally fine and then uh, tomorrow we'll have to look at getting that all hooked up um, between the lush grass and the heavy dews that we get this time of the year they're going to be fine um, but we definitely are going to want to get water here uh, before too long. So that'll be something we do tomorrow. But for now, I think they're going to be good here. And uh, let, we're just going to let them adjust to their new pasture. Hey guys, it's the uh, next morning. Let's go take a look at how those used it on pasture. The ones we moved out there from the sheep barn last night. Well, looks like they're happy to see me anyway. Hi, Blackie. That was your night outside. Well, as you can see, it looks like they've been eating a lot. All the leaves on the bottom of the trees here are gone. Looks like they've made themselves right at home here. All these small twigs are stripped. The unfortunate part is that the ground is very wet, so it looks like they're just because of this been such a high traffic area, they've really made a mess of it here. But once we give them a larger section at a time, you won't see this happening so much. We're going to have to give them a new pasture this today yet. But the good news is there's no dead ones. So as you can see, they seem to have adapted to lush uh, pasture feeding instead of the indoor hay feeding. We'll see what happens when we give them another fresh piece of pasture. But uh, I think they're going to be okay. 
Hey, Blackie. So, this is more, probably more how it will look when uh, we give them a larger section of pasture. It won't get as uh, destroyed like it did over there in that higher traffic area. And uh, in reality, if this pasture, this is more basically been planted for pasturing rather than hay. So if it does get a little bit of damage from pasturing them, I'm sort of okay with that. Obviously, I don't want that. But uh, if we got to overseed this again, in the, overseed this again in the spring, then we do, I guess. So it's not the end of the world. I'd rather have these sheep outside um, to feed them, keep them healthy, and uh, keep them well exercised. That's one thing about outdoors is it's uh, well ventilated, obviously, and it's also. Uh, they get a lot more exercise than when they do in the barn typically, which is of course a good thing. So anyway, I'm happy so far. And uh, today I guess we'll set up some more fences in here, another whole uh, square in here and uh, get them some more food. So as you can see, sheep on pasture can be a good thing. It's pretty uh, low labor. Um, it'll probably take me about, I don't know, half hour to an hour to set up some fencing here for the next section. And then they're good for three, four, maybe even five days. So I, I like this, you know, when the weather's nice. We get tons of rain like we've had the last two weeks. It's not going to be nearly as ideal, but even then, it can still work. So just want to say uh, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.